Hello there, faithful listener. You've tuned in to season seven of the Bible Explained podcast. So make sure to grab your cup of coffee because today we are going to be discussing the book of 2 Samuel. Welcome, faithful listeners, to the third to last episode of season seven. We're going to be moving into season eight very quickly into first Kings, which I'm very much looking forward to. And I hope you guys are looking forward to that as well. But I do want to say before I begin today's episode that there will not be an episode next week because season eight is going to look a little bit different. I'd like to take a few days to figure out what it's going to look like so I can bring you guys the best possible podcast. But then after that, I will be starting back up on Labor Day, which is the first Monday of September. I will be doing an episode on Labor Day this year, and that'll be the start of season eight. Okay, guys, let's read 2 Samuel 24, 1 through 14. And this portion of scripture is fascinating. It is fascinating and interesting. And there are many things we can talk about because there are parts of the scripture that people say are inconsistent with other portions of scripture. So we will delve into that and see about these apparent inconsistencies. So let's go ahead and read 2 Samuel 24, 1 through 14. And as always, I'll be reading from the W.E.B. Again, Yahweh's anger burned against Israel, and he moved David against them, saying, Go count Israel and Judah. The king said to Joab, the captain of the army who was with him, Now go back and forth through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, and count the people, that I might know the sum of the people. Joab said to the king, Now may Yahweh your God add to the people, however many they may be, one hundred times, and may the eyes of my lord the king see it. But why does my lord the king delight in this thing? Notwithstanding, the king's word prevailed against Joab and against the captains of the army. Joab and the captains of the army went out from the presence of the king to count the people of Israel. They passed over the Jordan and encamped in Aror, on the right side of the city that is in the middle of the valley of Gad, and to Jazer. And they came to Gilead and to the land of Tatim Hadshi. And they came to Danjon and around to Sidon. And they came to the stronghold of Tyre and to all the cities of the Hivites and of the Canaanites, and they went out to the south of Judah at Beersheba. So when they had gone back and forth through all the land, they came back to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and twenty days. Joab gave up the sum of the counting of the people to the king, and there were in Israel 800,000 valiant men who drew the sword, and the men of Judah were 500,000 men. David's heart struck him after he had counted the people. David said to Yahweh, I have sinned greatly in that which I have done. But now, Yahweh, put away, I beg you, the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. When David rose up in the morning, Yahweh's word came to the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and speak to David. Yahweh says, I offer you three things. Choose one of them that I might do it to you. So Gad came to David and told him and said to him, Shall seven years of famine come to you in your land? Or will you flee three months before your foes while they pursue you? Or shall there be three days pestilence in your land? Now answer and consider what answer I shall return to him who sent me. David said to Gad, I am in distress. Let us fall now into Yahweh's hand, for his mercies are great. Let me not fall into man's hand. So it's somewhat bizarre that this is the very last chapter of 2 Samuel, where it ends on David doing another really big sin. But with the first major sin that David did back in 2 Samuel 11, when he slept with Bathsheba, who was not his wife and also was married to somebody else, we can see how that is a sin. However, this particular chapter, it's a little bit more ambiguous, but we know that it is in fact a sin. So let's get into this. It says Yahweh's anger burned against Israel and he moved David against them saying, go count Israel and Judah. And so then David ends up doing it. But most people are probably thinking when reading that, how could David have sinned if he was just listening to what God told him to do? Well, actually, that's cleared up in First Chronicles 21. When you flip over there, it tells the same story. However, in 1 Chronicles 21, it actually expands on the story. So here's what 1 Chronicles 21 verse 1 says. Satan rose up against Israel and incited David to take a census of Israel. 
So then you're probably like, okay, well, how could Satan have incited David to do this when it says in 2 Samuel 24 that God was the one who incited David to do it? How does that make any sense? Well, let's go back to 2 Samuel 24 and read it again. It says, again, Yahweh's anger burned against Israel. So God was really angry with Israel about something. It could be because Israel never truly followed him. They were always following after their own gods. It actually says in one of the prophets that Israel never let go of their gods. You know, they were carrying the star gods with them up out of Egypt back in the book of Exodus. When God was like helping the Israelites get out of Egypt, the Israelites were still carrying their gods with them and worshiping their own gods. And they never truly followed Yahweh. And that was their pattern throughout all of the Old Testament. They were always worshiping other gods and God was always pretty angry at them because of that. So it could have been that it could have also been that Israel was just in rebellion once again against David, against someone that God had ordained. God was the one who put David in charge. He chose David. And in fact, when God was first talking about the kings way back in the Old Testament, he said, the king has to be somebody that I choose. That is who is going to be king. You guys don't get to choose your king. I get to choose your king. And Israel wasn't happy about that. They wanted to anoint their own king, which is why they anointed Absalom, who was absolutely terrible. But then after Absalom died, they followed after that Sheba guy and almost got into like a civil war because they wanted anybody except David. So God had good reasons to be angry at Israel once again, just because of their rebellion, just in general, they were always being very rebellious against Yahweh. So it says that again, Yahweh's anger burned against Israel and he moved David against them saying, go count Israel and Judah. Now what's interesting about the word he here, where it says, and he moved David against them. The he is ambiguous enough that you're not quite sure who it's talking about. But if you turn to first Chronicles 21, you can see that it was Satan specifically who incited David against Israel. So now looking at 2 Samuel 24, you can actually replace the word he here with Satan. And so here's how it reads. Again, Yahweh's anger burned against Israel and Satan moved David against them saying, go count Israel and Judah. So Satan was the one who tempted David. And it's very clear in scripture that God does not tempt people. He does not ever cause people to sin. However, God will allow Satan to do things, especially if the things that Satan is doing accomplishes some sort of end goal, which as you can see, God's anger was against Israel. So God allowed Satan to go and incite David against Israel. But it was Satan here that tempted David, not God. Satan moved David against Israel. Israel saying, go count Israel and Judah. Now, David had the opportunity, of course, to say no to Satan. He absolutely had that opportunity. And David knew that this was a sin. It was a sin for him to go and count Israel. In fact, it wasn't even David that knew it was a sin. Even Joab, who was like a murderer and had very little moral conscience, it seems like, Even Joab knew that it was wrong for David to count Israel. Joab said to the king, now may Yahweh your God add to the people, however many they may be, 100 times and may the eyes of my Lord, the king see it. But why does my Lord, the king delight in this thing? So Joab is trying to convince David not to do this. He's like, David, don't do it. Like, I I hope God adds to your numbers. I hope however many people there are out there that, uh, God adds a hundred times over those people, but don't go count them. Don't go do it. And here's the other thing. It wasn't just Joab that knew this was wrong. It actually says the captains of the army also knew that this was wrong because it says in verse four, notwithstanding the king's word prevailed against Joab and against the captains of the army. So it was not just Joab trying to convince David not to do this. It was also the captains of the army trying to convince David not to do this. So then you probably ask the question, well, what is wrong with counting the people? We don't know. (laughs) We do not know why this was wrong, but we know 
that something was wrong about it. Something was wrong enough about it that Joab knew it was wrong, that the captains of the army knew it was wrong, and even David himself knew it was wrong to do this. So whether it was, you know, pride on David's part, you know, I want to go out and count all the people that I have in my kingdom. It could have been pride. It could have been fear-based. It could have been, you know, I want to go count all of the people I have because I'm starting to rely on armies instead of on God. It could also be that David was counting the people because he wanted to expand Israel's borders. And that was a direct sin against God because God gave Israel to Israel, right? He gave Canaan to Israel, but Israel was never supposed to expand its borders. God was very, very clear about that. They aren't to expand. They are to protect what they have and keep what they have and not give it up to anybody else, but not to expand into other nations because then the Israelite people would become warmongers. And that was not what God wanted for his people. So is it possible that David wanted to expand the borders of Israel when he went and counted his people? And then the last thing though, that some people think might be the problem here is if you go to Exodus chapter 30, there's a story about how God wanted Moses to count the Israelite people. Actually, let's go over to Exodus 30 and read that particular passage real quick. Because God talks about uh, how guilt can come on a nation when they count their people. Um, Okay, Exodus 30, this is out of the NIV version, verses 11 and 12, 11 through 13 rather. Then the Lord said to Moses, when you take a census of the Israelites to count them, Each one must pay the Lord a ransom for his life at the time that he is counted. Then no plague will come on them when you number them. Each one who crosses over to those already counted is to give a half shekel according to the sanctuary shekel, which weighs 20 geras. This half shekel is an offering to the Lord. So for some reason, guilt would come on a nation if they were counted without paying the tax to the temple that is talked about here in Exodus chapter 30. Perhaps it was because Israel belonged to God and God decided when Israel should be uh, counted and when they shouldn't be counted. But if a you know earthly king decided to count Israel, they were taking that authority away from God. But in order to show that they were giving that authority back to God, each person was to pay the temple tax of a half shekel. Which actually brings me to another point is that a half shekel wasn't nothing. You know, that was pretty expensive for the average person to pay from my understanding. It was not nothing. And if you look in Exodus 30, it does say that everyone, regardless of their income, had to pay this tax of a half shekel. So maybe God was looking at David doing this unnecessary census as just being kind of cruel to the poor. Because if if David were to do it right, every single person was supposed to pay that temple tax. And that would put an extra burden on the poor of Israel. Now, back in Moses's day, when God initially had Moses count the people, they had just come from Egypt and Egypt was paying them, like actually giving them expensive things to leave Egypt. So the Israelites in the wilderness were actually pretty well off and the half shekel would not have been as difficult to pay. But now in David's day, perhaps there are a lot more poor people. And so possibly God was also looking at this as um, just an unnecessary burden to put on the people. Now, nothing is stated about that in Second Samuel 24, That's just my own personal thoughts and opinion about that. The fact is, whatever happened here, David knew that it was a sin for Joab and for his army to go out and count Israel. And Satan also knew it was a sin for David to do this. And so that is why Satan tempted David in this way was because Satan knew that this would cause David to sin greatly. However, we just don't know the whole situation here or exactly why this was wrong. But it says that after the counting was done, it mentions that there were 800,000 men of Israel, valiant men who drew the sword. And then the men of Judah were 500,000 men. Now, if you go to first Chronicles 21 and read the whole story, 
that is repeated here in First Chronicles 21, it'll be a different number. So let's read that. First Chronicles 21, verse 5. It says, Joab reported the number of the fighting men to David. In all of Israel, there were 100 or 1,100,000 men who could handle a sword, including 470,000 in Judah. So why are the two numbers different? Well, you'll notice here in 1 Chronicles 21, it says the word all in all of Israel. There were 100 million, 100,000 men. But if you go over to 2 Samuel 24, that word all is not in there. It just says, and there were in Israel 800,000 valiant men. So it could be that First Chronicles 21 was talking about, um, you know, everybody, every single person, whether slave or free, whether in the military or not in the military, all these men of Israel were able to fight, which came to over 1 million men. But then in 2 Samuel 24, it could be that some groups were excluded. So maybe, you know, foreigners living in the land were excluded or David's army already was excluded. So we're not really sure exactly about that either. But we do know that 1 Chronicles 21 mentions the word all, meaning everybody, whereas 2 Samuel 24 does not say the word all, which is how they ended up getting two different numbers. So anyway, Joab comes back. Going back to 2 Samuel 24, Joab comes back and gives the number of the people to David. And it says that David's heart struck him after he counted the people. So David knew it was wrong. And David knew this was wrong before he even really caught on to the fact that his sin with Bathsheba was wrong. That is how wrong this sin was that David did here in 2 Samuel 24. It was more overt. It was more out in the open. You know, David was trying to hide his, his sin with Bathsheba. But this time David knew. And David pursues God first. Instead of God coming to David, David says to Yahweh, Yahweh, put away, I beg you, the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. He says, I have sinned greatly. David asks for forgiveness from Yahweh. And it says that when David rose up in the, the morning, Yahweh's word came to the prophet Gad, who was David's seer, meaning David's prophet. And God says to Gad, go and speak to David and say, I offer you three things. Choose one of them that I may do it to you. So Gad comes to David in verse 13 and he says to him, shall seven years of famine come to you in your land? Or will you flee three months before your foes while they pursue you? Or shall there be three days pestilence in your land? Now answer and consider what answer I shall return to him who sent me. I laugh because this just reminds me of when I was a little kid, you know, and I would do something bad and my parents would be like, all right, you get three choices of how I'm going to punish you. And all three choices were equally terrible. Okay. So for example, my mom or my dad would be like, all right, you get spanked with the wooden spoon four times, or you get spanked with the wooden spoon with a hole in it two times, or you get spanked with the rubber spatula once. <laughs> <laughs> Man, all of those options were terrible. But the worst part about that, I have to say, was when they would tell me to go get the wooden spoon. <laughs> oh, it wasn't even, I mean, it was it hurt, obviously. It was a spanking, but it was not as bad, you know, as like going and getting the wooden spoon. <laughs> all right, going back to this story, though. God gives David kind of like my parents, three equally bad choices here. He says the first thing that you can choose is seven years of famine on the land. The second thing you can choose is fleeing three months before your enemies while they pursue you. That sounds terrible. Or the last thing is that there will be three days pestilence in your land. So choose which one sounds the best to you. And David can't choose. He says to Gad, I am in distress. Let us fall now into Yahweh's hand for his mercies are great. Let me not fall into man's hand. So I think what David is saying here is, I think he's saying, I don't want to choose, but also out of the three of those, I really don't want to be pursued by my enemies again. I don't want to fall into the hands of man. So he says, God, you choose between the seven years of famine or the three days pestilence. 
So what does God choose? We'll talk about the rest of this story on Friday, which is the last Friday episode I am going to be doing. From now on, on Fridays, I'm going to be doing a separate podcast for people who signed up for the coffee tier over on Kofi. We will be going through the book of Psalms on that separate podcast on Fridays. So if you're interested in becoming a coffee tier member over on Kofi, then just click the link that says Kofi in the description. You'll see that there's an option to become a T tier member or a coffee tier member. The T tier and the coffee tier both get to the discussion episodes that I do every other Monday with my sister. But the coffee tier members will also get the special Friday podcast episode. And uh, I won't just be doing the Psalms over there. I'm planning on redoing Genesis and also redoing Matthew as well. And then maybe I'll also work on the Septuagint or something like that. I don't know. We'll figure it out as we get uh, closer to that. All right, faithful listeners, I'll see you guys tomorrow for our episode from 1 Corinthians. Happy listening and God bless. Thank you.